been lonely, 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 lonely. They say the loudest in the room is weak. That's what they assume, but I disagree. I say the loudest in the room is probably the loneliest one in the room. This is a verse by Tyler the Creator that I think fits perfectly for Tuka Tukin. Tuka as a character has always been seen as the most outgoing of the duo. However, as the show went on, we realized that Tuka has to cope with a lot of loss, trauma, and fear of being alone. She often tries to force a good time into the situation, gets pushed around by those that have power over her, and often pushes away people from the amount of pain she endures. Much of this was developed over time, and it started well into childhood. Tuka's childhood life is very difficult to discuss as she was hit with a lot of experiences no child can be ready for at such a young age. She was growing up in a household raised by a single mother who we know as Trudy with five kids until she wasn't after a car accident that took Trudy's life. That led to a variety of events where Tuka and her siblings were struggling to cope with the loss of their mother and had no choice but to live with their auntie Tallulah. Tuka's sisters and brothers were all able to follow their passions in life. However, for Tuka, she felt the loss of her mother the most. It didn't help that the person that reminded her of that trauma was none other than Tallulah. Tulula is a successful businesswoman as she was able to take the fashion industry by storm at an early age. With her being very successful in life, she never really had time to take care of her sister's many children. So it comes to no surprise that she may have given them a place to stay but was not involved as a parental figure in life. She was able to give them a financial outlet until many of them were able to take care of themselves. All except for Tuka. Tuka never took the opportunity to pursue any sort of career, so she was the one that ended up having to rely on Tallulah the most. Tallulah was used to this since, from what we know, she has helped Tuka's mother out plenty of times in the past. However, that made Tallulah think very negatively of her sister. She saw Truly as more of a failure and only helped her not out of pity, but out of pettiness. She wanted to remind Truly that she had a better life with the money she was giving her. Fast forward years later, that belief is transferred to Tuka. With Tuka's carefree personality and go with the flow nature, it's no surprise that she became heavily reliant on Tallulah's cash offering. However, that led to a lot of verbal abuse that was sent her way by Tallulah, reminding her of how she was like her mother in the worst way. And what did that get her? No career, no man, and you ended up just like her. Well, at least you got the good sense to take my money. This hits Tuka very hard because of how she cares for her mom. And the main way she was able to handle that abuse is by consuming as much alcohol as possible. Tuka resorting to alcoholism made it where she wasn't able to improve her situation in life, with Tallulah even assisting with this bad habit every time she visited. Her coping with her struggles became a daunting task. So when Tuka decided to go sober, that's when she finally had enough of Tallulah's abuse, especially when it came to how her aunt talked about her mom. I never asked you for anything. I came to see you. You can keep the money. It was the first step of rebuilding herself and not be so dependent on someone else. However, in doing so, it puts her in a place that's unknown and emphasizes the rocky relationship with her family. That's when we have to talk about her relationship with her brothers and sisters. They all have been able to find some sort of success in life. Tim Tam became successful politicians within Birdtown as mayors, Desmond is a successful food scientist, and Terry has a family of her own. With Tuka not really having that sort of success and presenting herself to have a carefree attitude, she wasn't able to have that strong connection to her siblings as she would have liked. That's especially the case with her older sister, Terry. Terry was the person that had to fill the parental role when their mother died, so she had to make sure to keep her siblings out of trouble as they grow up in a hard situation. Having to step into that role and have her own childhood experience be taken away can be such a hard pill to swallow. 
she has made a lot of big time decisions in order for the rest of her siblings to have as much of a normal childhood as possible. It can be difficult having to cope with that reality. So seeing Tuka not taking her life seriously as she needs to in her 30s, it does drive a wedge between the two of them. Throughout the show, we have seen Tuka having to try to have a conversation with Terry. The two are exact opposites of each other, so they don't always see eye to eye. With the two not really discussing their issues with one another, a lot of the tension can be cut with a sharp knife with how thick it is. That was shown when it came to Terry's daughter. Tula. With how little time Tuka was able to spend with her family for one reason or another, Tulip does show a lot of interest in her aunt whenever she arrives. The difference in how Tuka treats Tulip compared to Terry is clear, and that makes Terry have a sense of jealousy when it comes to their relationship. Oh, that's cute, telling me how to raise my kid. With Terry already having to be the motherly figure much sooner compared to the average person, she takes her parenting in a safe first perspective, making sure Tulip doesn't get into trouble and prevents her from doing things that could risk her getting hurt. Meanwhile, for Tuka, she is big on expressing creativity to Tulip and allows her imagination and curiosity to run wild. While both are very important for a child growing up, the two ideals continue to crash at one another to the point where not so subtle jabs start to fling between the two. So every time Tuka does anything with Tulip and something goes awry, Terry often blames Tuka's carelessness and complains about needing to clean up whatever mess that happens. While it is understandable to have those beliefs, it can really mess with a person's psyche in trying to be better and be mature. That was the case in the episode Corpse Week. At least you got to enjoy your childhood. Mine ended when mom died and I had to hold shit down so you could keep being a kid. These are just a taste of how the trauma the Toucan family had gone through affected Tuka's relationship with them as a whole. It's hard to stay a tight-knit family when the glue ends up disappearing at such a short notice. With no one to guide Tuka the way her mother has, she keeps pushing her problems away and not facing them head on. So with her not being able to see eye to eye with her family, she ends up isolating herself and not having that family comfort she desires the most. Her lack of connection with her family isn't the only avenue where her loneliness is shown. With the desire of wanting something to fill that void, she ends up having to rely on her friendship with Birdie to keep her spirits high. I talked about Birdie in a previous video about how her insecurities affected her life. However, Tuka does see her in a very positive life because, in Tuka's eyes, Birdie has been able to have a strong relationship with her family, she has a stable job, and is able to pursue her dreams, and she has a steady relationship with Speckle. Birdie has been a longtime friend to Tuka for over a decade and have been supportive to each other through thick and thin since college. The two bring out the best in each other. Tuka does drag Birdie into a lot of social gatherings and have her open up. Meanwhile, Birdie is able to try to smooth things over for Tuka if things get a bit too crazy. Throughout the years, Tuka heavily relied on Birdie to be her support group to the point where she is seen as a found family. Birdie is someone that she inspires to be because she was able to set herself up to continue to work on herself. However, with her being the only Bond, it does lead to a lot of moments where Tuka becomes a bit clingy towards her best friend. That's especially the case with Speckle. Speckle is a man that entered Birdie's life to become that special someone Birdie needed. However, that relationship started to build a wedge Tuka was not ready for. When Birdie and Speckle wanted to take that next step in their relationship and move in together, Tuka decided to move out of the apartment Birdie and her were living in to make room for Speckle. While Tuka is understanding that Birdie has strong feelings for him, she cannot help but feel like she's being replaced by him as that number one support system. With Tuka being heavily reliant on others to get by in life, Tuka feels that Speckle is a threat in taking away her best friend. So instead of trying to build that relationship with him, she will do everything she can to shrink his own 
confidence. Speckle has been used as the butt of the joke in a lot of instances. Being treated negatively by Tuka with a large number of teasing and being condescending of who he is as a person. Even with the amount of negativity Tuka throws Speckle's way, Speckle still wanted to have a good relationship with her because of how important Tuka is to his girlfriend. He was there when Tuka had a falling out with her aunt. He was there when Tuka was trying to tame a rebellious duck boat. And he was there when Tuka was coping with the loss of her mom. Tuka, I care. It took a while for Tuka to realize that as the two slowly built their relationship together with their Tuka and Speckle Day adventures. When both of them are at their lowest point, they are able to comfort each other. It gives the lesson that she doesn't necessarily need to have only one person in her supportive system. While it can be tough to handle not being able to always be by the person you care about the most, you can also still be a strong part of that foundation for them. However, it does leave Tuka to a lot of questions about having to build her own foundation and support since Birdie will not always be there no matter what. Which does leave the question as who else she could truly trust to be in her life. Finding that partner that will be her rock through thick and thin. While Tuka has always seemed to be the confident and outgoing bird in a lot of people's eyes, she really has a lot of confidence in herself to find that special person. While she has been sexually active before, she never tied herself down to anyone and she tends to struggle sharing her feelings with the person she cares about. And she went through many trials before being able to have that confidence in finding that special one. The first being with the deli guy, a monkey who works at a deli shop in Birdtown. While he didn't have a lot of screen time within the series outside of the episode he was introduced in, the deli guy played a significant role in showing that alcohol helped her get through a lot of dates. Now that she has committed to being sober in her life, she found it incredibly difficult for her to be grounded with this dude. She micromanaged everything while trying to get ready. She was forcefully overzealous when the deli guy tried to make an intimate move, and she frantically tried to get Birdie's advice on what to do, which didn't equate to much. In the end, she bombed her opportunity with the deli guy because she was trying to force the fun instead of making it more natural. This is where we truly see the flaws of Tuka coming to fruition, and how she is not always the overly confident bird when we were first introduced. She can also be fragile, like Birdie, but in different ways. While she can hold her own and become the life of the party, it's the moments where she has to be vulnerable where she struggles the most. Later on in the series, when Birdie and Speckle started to become closer, Tuka's loneliness started to increase. When one of your closest friends gets into a relationship that's going to the next level, you want to be able to show support as much as you can and give them the space they need. However, the longer you play along as that third wheel in the relationship, it starts to impact you if you don't have a significant other. It's the same thing with Tuka. She never had that opportunity to settle with another person and that sort of way. With her wanting to find that other avenue, she tries to go about it in the most extravagant way possible. Like the tour bus to love she made up on the spot to try to find that spark with someone. Or the pink bunny she hastily picked up after a breakup. Something we'll dive into later. She does create an atmosphere where she goes incredibly headstrong without thinking of the consequences of her actions and how it affects others. However, as we see her go through these moments of not considering others, all that changes when she enters one of her most important relationships in life. We're okay, right? Um, well, actually I was- Great! Kara was Tuka's very first real relationship within season two. She was someone that was introduced during her visit at the hospital to see her aunt. The two of them hit it off very quickly as they spent a lot of time together as the season went on. However, what Tuka didn't realize was the manipulation that was happening when they became an item. So just prior to dating, Tuka was struggling to find a way to open up to Kara about her feelings. Every time she tried to talk about the chance of dating, Kara never really responded back to her. And when she finally met up with her face to face, 
Kara really made Tuka feel like she was in the friend zone. However, as soon as Tuka was ready to dip, Kara made sure to make her move to get her hooked. So when it comes to Kara, it felt like she was testing Tuka's submissiveness. With how she noticed Tuka bumping into her numerous times, a lot of the texting between the two seemed pretty friendly at first. Her playing off Tuka digging through her social media, to her sharing some very graphic stuff throughout her job, and not messaging Tuka back when she asked Kara to meet up. What's also a bit of a red flag is how another woman who was interested in her also dealt with the same situation. So this seems to be a cycle with Kara. And when Tuka shows how much she really wants Kara throughout the night with her body language, that's when she hooked her. This was something that could easily be missed by anyone. But when you solely look at how they came to be, it seems that Kara is the one that wants to be in control of what happens. We see that as the relationship continues to blossom as well with how Kara wants Tuka to spend time with her 24-7. And when she does want to spend time with other people, Kara shows some heavy jealousy. It's cool that I'm going to this show with Birdie, right? You already said yes, so what does it matter? Kara wants to be the one to plan everything in her life. So if she doesn't have that control, she becomes very vocal about her disdain of the situation at hand. It even gets to a point where she wants to control her partner. She started to treat Tuka as more of a pet than an actual person. With the way she was judging Tuka in how she eats and how she dresses, Kara also uses these pins as a reminder of what she expects of Tuka, as if she is training her to be the perfect girlfriend in her eyes. It forces Tuka to change something that was completely opposite of who she really was. Birdie was able to notice the amount of changes that had happened to Tuka and wanted to share her concern about the relationship. Birdie was able to notice the amount of changes that had happened to Tuka and wanted to share her concerns about the relationship when they finally had the opportunity to meet up after a long time. She's de tuka -fying you. You're barely recognizable. What's happening? After her heart-to-heart -heart with Birdie and surprisingly Bruce about how a relationship should be, Tuka looks back on how her relationship with Kara has gone and realizes how one-sided it had become. So at the end of their double date, Tuka finally decided to stand up to Kara and put her foot down. We always follow your schedule. We hang out with your friends. You're leading this dance. You need to meet me in the tank. What? I mean the middle. I have discussed this moment before in a previous video where having that heart to heart with someone you care about is very important, but can be very risky depending on who your partner is. Dealing with someone who is as toxic and controlling as Kara could result in yourself getting harmed emotionally and even physically as well. In Tuka's case, Kara decided to completely ghost her as soon as she saw full-on defiance from Tuka. It really showed that Kara likes Tuka, but not in a healthy manner. She liked Tuka for her obedience and her dependency. There was no interest in what Tuka is as a person, and that's why she was quick to leave her high and dry, not even bothering to even leave any indication that their relationship is over. This completely broke Tuka and her own self-confidence. As someone who has shown to want to bottle up her negative emotions, Kara broke that dam and put Tuka in pieces. This was a wake-up call to find that middle ground, trying to be considerate of others when aiming for a relationship, but also not losing your true self in order to accommodate for it. But it cracks open what Tuka feels about herself deep down. She was going to be lonely forever. When a toxic relationship ends in a way that's not on the victim's terms, the amount of manipulation that was happening during that time will haunt them for a very long time. They tend to blame themselves for everything not working out and think of themselves as lesser. However, it was Birdie that was able to give Tuka hope in herself once more by being there when she was at her most vulnerable. I'm the one keeping me alone. You're not alone, Tuka. 
So Tuka being able to finally cope with the loss of her relationship, she was able to recoup the one she has with Birdie. It was a bit reassuring for Tuka to be able to find herself again and really look for actual help. So Tuka was back to square one. Only this time, Tuka was ready to rebuild herself and be more responsible, which leads us to our next relationship. I like caring for other people, you know? It makes me feel good. So don't worry about being too much for me. Figgy, as you can see, is an anthropomorphic male tree that is completely different from her previous relationships. Figgy is in the middle of the two most important relationships that Tuka has experienced so far in this series. Figgy was the perfect middle ground and was set up for her to be able to really test herself in what she has learned in her past relationships. Having to be open and understanding are major steps into having that good bond. A good example is about Tuka being honest about her painful monthly cramps. Realizing that she's not going to figure out why her cramps are so bad in one visit, being honest about it and Figgy showing that care and understanding made her realize that there is an avenue with him to be open about her concerns. One of the things that was important for Tuka was the two willing to be clear about what boundaries are when it comes to one another. For Tuka, it was mainly having to do with the limits of alcohol. As stated, she committed herself to a sober lifestyle, so she wants to keep herself away from it as much as possible. While for Figgy, he doesn't want to be asked to stop drinking because it plays a major part in his life. Tuka expressing her boundaries and understanding Figgy's really lets us know she has learned through her past relationships. Listening and understanding how the person feels in the moment, unlike how she did with the Delhi guy, while also keeping firm in what her own limits are within the relationship, unlike with Kara. So it shows how she's committed to making this relationship work. However, Tuka does become lenient and opens the door for him to drink in front of her. And it leads to one of the most horrific visuals Tuka had to witness. Figgy, I don't think this is- Hey, what's my one rule? Huh. Tuka underestimated how bad of an alcoholic Figgy is. It was a very difficult thing for Tuka to see, as she cares for Figgy very much and doesn't really feel comfortable allowing him to get this bad. She wasn't really able to handle the amount of stress that can come with dealing with an alcoholic. There's always an ugly side to alcohol, and you can never predict what would happen if a person has too much. It affects everyone differently, and you don't really know how much it can affect your relationship with another person if you don't know what they end up doing if they consume it. With Figgy's alcohol addiction at the point where he wants it through his bloodstream, Tuka made the decision that this was something that was too much for her to handle and ended up breaking the relationship. I can understand why she decided to go this route because I think she doesn't want to be seen as a pushover like how it was in her previous relationship. At the same time, she doesn't want to push that person she cares about to make a major change in order for her to be happy. Even though she has dealt with those alcoholic demons before, she doesn't want to make Figgy deal with his issues until he is ready, which seems like a long way from now. So she felt it was best to go their separate ways. Although she decided to go that route and once again attempts to mask her own pain from making such a tough decision, it became very clear that she was never over Figgy. There were two main instances where she tries to find a new significant other during her time away from Figgy. The first being at the Rake Championship match where she tried to hook up with one of the players during halftime. However, her attempts failed as when she tried to make her move, she started to have some flashes of Figgy's drunken state and it completely haunted her. Another instance is when she decided to follow too much into her zodiac sign and try to get into a relationship with a plush bunny that matches the same energy. However, getting lost in the sauce in that zodiac mindset made the relationship go way too fast even for the rabbit, which made that relationship be a lost cause by the end of the day. After all of that, 
she ends up seeing Figgy once again, and they do catch up a little bit with some small talk. We found out that Figgy ended up having some health concerns and was told not to consume alcohol for a whole month. Figgy didn't see it as a big deal. While he is going to follow what the doctor has ordered, he felt that it was only a small break before he dives right back into his addiction. This is where Tuka really showed her frustrations with that mindset and told him how he needs to be more concerned about his health instead of drowning in a way carelessly. You're right. I'm sorry. It's me, Figgy. I think that shows how much he truly values Tuka's opinion and the respect he has for her as well. It also shows that Figgy still has those feelings for her. While it is very subtle, the two miss each other very much and do want to get back together to make things work. That is especially the case when the two see each other again at Dottie's wedding, where Tuka is having to deal with being near her toxic ex in Kara, while Figgy has to deal with not succumbing to his alcohol addiction. This was a very important moment for the two of them as they both have realizations within this event. For Tuka, it's finally having that closure and understanding that not every person you end up being close with is going to have that epiphany with you. No matter how much you want it, we find that out with Kara's new girlfriend, Beth. The moment of Kara wanting to change for the better was for the frog and not Tuka. It was a tough pill to swallow that Kara didn't view Tuka the same way after trying so hard to be that rock for her. However, she does become someone else's epiphany. Figgy was struggling not to fall into the grasp of alcoholism. However, when he was trying to battle his demons, Tuka was in trouble with her recurring cramps becoming infinitely worse this time around. With Tuka having the dire need of medical attention, Figgy's care for Tuka was able to shine through his obsession with alcohol. Figgy being so overly attached to drinking is the same way Kara was when it comes to her being in control. They both find comfort in that negative habit, and it does seem that Figgy has ended a lot of relationships because of his alcohol addiction. However, even with all of the alcohol surrounding him, he begins to see the love for Tuka to be much stronger than anything else in that moment. This light Tuka has brought into his world was what helped him finally break that urge for alcohol. Tuka became his epiphany. It was a much important step to finally be that avenue of love Tuka desperately needed in life. And it took a lot of struggles trials and tribulations in order to finally find that special someone to make her less lonely. Which does bring us to the final point that helped Tuka realize where she is in life. And that is her desire to have children of her own. Throughout the series, we saw how much family means to Tuka in her life. With the amount of time that had been lost when she wasn't able to see them, that desire of wanting to have that sense of family was strong within her. It really all started because of the loss of her mother, Truly. I think it's a good time to really talk about their relationship here because Truly plays such an important role for Tuka. She was the brightest spot in her family's life, and it was something Tuka aspires to be at a very early age. The moments where we do talk about Truly are very few, but they are extremely important when it comes to understanding why Tuka is the way she is. The spirit of Truly has always been a strong part of Tuka. She has been the only parental figure she's ever really had prior to her death, and is seen to have the strongest admiration for her. As we saw in her consciousness in the season 3 finale, we know that Tuka spent a lot of time with her mother. Truly was even willing to take her to her job since she couldn't afford a babysitter at the time. So it was natural that Tuka formed such a strong bond with her from an early age and saw her as a hero. Reason being is because no matter how difficult the situation is, she was able to figure it out and keep her family afloat. Even though Truly's life was cut short due to that accident, 
Tuka never forgot about the happiness she brought to her life, which is why she is very adamant in wanting to have children of her own one day. She is someone that aspires to be that inspiration when raising a child. It's a wonderful goal to have to be the person that gives someone a meaningful childhood, especially since she never had that chance when truly died when she was young. The passion she has in wanting that next step to fill that void has been the strongest. Every time it is mentioned about wanting a child, she makes it known that she wants to have one. From her discussion with Speckle to her various trips to the hospital, she always has expressed her desire to raise the next generation of her family. It's why her relationship with Tulip is very strong. Her desire to be that glue to get her family back together is strong, and any threat to that can make her devastated. When Tuka's cramp became too much for her to handle to the point where she had to go to the emergency room with a specialist, this is when we discovered that the cramps she has been getting is from something called the growth. It coiled up around her most vital parts to the point where if they aren't removed cleanly, it could damage her chances of having a child. This hit Tuka hard and made her become hesitant in going through with it. Even with the chances of it harming Tuka to the brink of death, it felt like a difficult choice to make as the idea of having that child can truly fill that void of being wanted. However, it was at that moment where Birdie expressed her love and care for Tuka. It helped her realize that she already does have a family with all of her closest friends. So even with hesitancy, she was going to remove the growth so that she can continue to live. Tuka craves that sense of belonging in life. And you can understand why with everything that she has been through. She wanted so badly to hide the fact that she wasn't fine and that she can be the life of the party while trying to hide her own issues. Even though she tries to find more people she can be close to, a lot of it does blow up in her face. Even then, she does learn how to develop not only her ability to understand other boundaries, but also how to set up her own. Tuka continued to build her relationships with Birdie, Speckle, Terry, Tula, and Figgy. Plus, it shows that even though there are times where Tuka can feel lonely, there are people there that can fill that void and really show that she can build the support group she desires.